You know, thank you for accommodating the change in the schedule for the press conference to Monday. It's, a, it's just a better day for me. And, and um, you know, I think four days after the game to recap the game is a little long to do it on Tuesday. So I appreciate you guys uh, being receptive to the change. Um, you know, all the way up till last week and, you know, the, obviously the disappointment in the game. But, you know, up until last week, we, you know, this team has made a lot of progress, you know, a lot of progress. And, and, and they will continue to do so. It's unfortunate. And however, you know, this team is still young and it still needs to grow and learn and develop and, and understand the process of, of how you win week to week. And that's a challenge every week. And um, unfortunately, that was, you know, not a, not a great performance. And we all know that. And uh, the best thing about it is that our guys uh, took it, you know, uh, dead in the eye about, you know, understanding what our issues were. And we got everything addressed and talked about. And, and uh, so it showed today with our first practice of the week, you know, prep with our preparation for ASU. So we're, uh, we're moving on forward to ASU. And it was a really good, uh, good energy today with what we're doing. Obviously, we're trying to get the bad taste out of our mouth. And it starts with having a great preparation week so we can, we can play well this Saturday. So I'd like to open up for you guys and ladies. Hey, Coach, uh, just um, with the change and everything, what are Monday practices like, and what do you want to see in, from a Monday practice? Because you, you talk a lot about, well, this was a good Tuesday practice, so that kind of thing. So what do you, yeah. what do, you do on Monday? Well, our, our heavier days are usually Tuesday and Wednesday. Those are our full padded practices. Uh, Monday is a, uh, we call it uppers. It's a half padded practice. And it's an introduction to uh, ASU and you know, their schemes offensively, defensively, special teams. So we start to, it's kind of a, um, you know, we do some work against each other uh, offensively and defensively. For example, uh, we, we still have these seven on seven drills and a two minute drill against the offense and defense. But then the bulk of the practice is really introducing ASU, you know, what they do offensively, what we do, def they, what they do defensively. And we start trying to, you know, implement some of the, the things that we discussed last night into for our game planning. So uh, they were very attentive, you know, a lot of energy today. Um, you know, I, it's, a, it's a team that's responded every time, you know, we've had an issue that has come up, you know, over the course of, since I've been here, they've been able to respond. And, and uh, it's not a question of whether the guys are playing hard. It's more the efficiency and, and the execution of what needs to be done. So the efforts there is, is that now we've got to clean up and really be more demanding of, you know, and they're, they're doing that today. I thought today, they, they showed a lot of excitement about doing things right, you know, and making it look right. So uh, we're off to a good start. Carl, you mentioned after the game, need to reevaluate sort of everything. I'm curious if after, in your reevaluation, have you decided to make any changes as far as staff duties or, you know, quarterback, things like that? Not yet. Uh, we are going to give, you know, Drew Carter, because he did show some, some glimpse of some positive things, but you know, we're going to continue to bring his reps along. And, you know, we're only repping two guys anyway. And, and uh, so we, we're going to get him ready to, to possibly be in there and, and get a chance to play. And, and we need to, you know, bring both these guys along. We really do. So I think Drew, uh, when he came in, he showed a little bit of a spark. And we're going to continue to bring that process forward. Absolutely. Uh, staff changes, no. No changes yet. We're going to kind of work through uh, all the dynamics of everything we're doing. Um, I'm going to show my, my face in the offensive room a little bit more now. So I'm going to try to help the process. And, and again, I'm just trying to be a, a helping hand to, to the, how that whole situation works. But we think that we're off to a good start. With Drew Carter, what are some of the things that he's doing well at this young stage of his college career? And what are the, kind of the biggest challenges for him as he gets, like you said, possibly more game action? It's, it's still the, you know, the recognition of, of what he's looking at. You know, I, you, you notice that he, he can throw the ball very well, very effectively. He's got a great arm. It's just getting those reps of understanding what defenses are doing and being able to, you know, go through his progressions. He understands the run game pretty well. You know, he can get us to the right runs and stuff that we do from that standpoint. It's just really bringing him along with, with uh, you know, with him being in with its timing, with his footwork and timing and release you know, with the progressions and stuff that we're doing. It's very similar to what, you know, Brendan Rice is, oh, Brendan Rice, Brendan uh, Lewis is doing too. So I got too many Brendans on this team. But, yeah, they're both kind of in that same uh, mode of really trying to just sharpen up themselves in terms of their timing. Coach, you 
Ted, you've had so many rodeos, good, good, bad, or otherwise. How, how do you strike that balance with a young <laughs> team and a young offense, especially with uh, you know a nadir like that, but wanting to be patient and teach when you've got an 18-year-old quarterback and a 19-year-old quarterback, for example. That's, that's why <laughs> I know, I know. But that's why – it's exactly right. That's why they pay us to do what we do. And, you know, and, and I'm not into the excuse business. You guys know that. And we, we just have to coach harder, coach better, find different ways of getting um, the information digested, getting the information where it's part of their pr mental process. Uh, those are the things that we, we have to continue to explore. You know, I think coaching is always challenging. It really is because all the guys that I've coached in my career, they're all different. They all learn differently. Some of them learn by they, you can talk to them face to face and they get it and they understand it. They can visualize it. Some of them you have to put them on the board. Some of them they got to see the video. Uh, so it, it's so many different mediums in coaching that that's, you know, you have to find the most effective way to do it. And I, I do stress with our coaches about men, just because you like to coach this way, it may not be the most effective way with your that particular player. So we're really scrutinizing all the details about making sure they're digesting the information that we're doing, making sure we're asking for a recall. Okay, now what did we just say and how are we doing this? So that we're feeling like they're getting a chance to retain. And and that's where we have to do a better job as coaches. Balance question for you, because as fans, uh, you know, fans and media sometimes we react you know, one way or another after, after certain things. And sure. a week ago, there was a lot of talk of, wow, this team took the number five team in the country to the wire. And now it's fire everybody, do all this stuff. How, <laughs> do, how do you balance those emotions of needing to fix things but not overreacting to one game? You can't overreact, you know, and, and as disappointed as we all were. I mean, we all were. I was included in that. It's, it's, you know, the very first thing I think about is, well, we're not doing something effectively enough for these guys to perform. That's the way you have to look at it. You know, it it's really comes down to we have to get our players ready to perform, you know, the way that it should be in practice and should be translated in correlation with how it should look on Saturdays. So that's, that's, that's just going back to the drawing board about what is the best way are they retaining it? You know, because they're all different. And sometimes the coaches, I believe that, you know, I've done this for a number of years about you have to, you might have to coach one guy this particular way and you have to coach this guy a different way. It can't be you coach the whole group one way. That's my challenge that I, I put on our coaches. So we have to find different ways to make sure that everybody's getting a chance to learn it so that they can perform it. And, um, you know, those are the challenges. And I and I get what the fans are and, I, and I'm disappointed in, in, in our performance as well, and it's, it's not a good look for us. I understand that completely. Um, but, you know, I was able to wake up Sunday and, and get back to work and, and, and kind of, you know, put, put your shoes on and, and let's go to work, put the gloves on and let's do what we need to do. So, you know, that's what our staff is doing. You know, they're, they're going to work to do whatever it takes for our guys to play better. And I think our team realizes that. You know, the one thing I do like about this team is that, they don't make excuses either. They don't finger point. They're not, you know, the offense didn't do this and we did this on defense or, you know, we dropped a punt return. And, you know, there, there's no one that's just scrutinizing each other about it. Are they disappointed about it? Yes. But they know that it's going to take all of us to win. It's going to take all of us. And, and they know that they have confidence in each other that they can get it done. So we're, we're going to just uh, tie into those facts and, and just get ourselves better. With, with the young quarterback struggling through the first couple of weeks, um, did you give any thought to or have any conversations about potentially moving a guy like Matt Lynch to quarterback just to provide another option there? We've had talks, and we actually use Matt as an emergency in case we lost everybody, <laughs> which is a real – that's a real issue, right? So he is in that emergency role. You know, we have given him kind of a small package of things just in case in case. Um, but we're not there yet. But yes, that's something we've we've have discussed. No whispering in the back. Hey Carl, when you watch <clears throat> the all twenty two film or you digest the game film, do you see Brendan being gun shy at that position? Do you see him having plays to be made that he's just not making? And if so, how do you rehabilitate kind of a young quarterback in the season? You know, that's that's a tremendous question because I think fans see it that way. Well, why isn't he throwing it? Why isn't he doing this? Why isn't he doing that? Well, 
if you and, and you know what you guys see it all in real time right so you don't get the opportunity that we get to study it and dissect the play and run it back and forth 15 20 times you know a lot of those a lot of the things that people are seeing is not completely about Brendan Lewis you know sometimes we're not open you know sometimes there's a breakdown in protection you know sometimes he did miss the read so it's a it's kind of all encompassing right now but unfortunately he's the one that has the microscope on him and and that's what people are seeing and it's unfair to him and, and we all talked about that and he understands it but you know that's part of the big boy business of being a quarterback right but there's there's just so many areas that we can improve and and they you know we watched the the, the film as an offense together just so they can see the mistakes and the things that we can do better you know and there was a couple few few good things that we did but those are few and far between, right? So they, we all understand on the offensive side that everything needs to pick up. And today was a great, great sign of everybody stepping forward and doing that. Max Raymond, Jim Rodman, Chris Miller all got knocked out of the game. I know, unfortunately. Do you updates on any of those guys? You know, Max got, got dinged. You know, that's, that's more of a, you know, he's going to be in protocol because of what he's dealing with. Um, you know, with, with Chris Miller, unfortunately, that's another – injury that's going to set him back for the year unfortunately for him and I, I feel so bad for Chris because he's it seems like most of his career has been been something like that you know Kobe Purcell didn't play um, that was something that was a game time decision uh, where he wasn't able to play so so part of it is is the, I call sudden change right you know, all of a sudden you had a center that you practiced with the whole week and he was taking all the first team reps and then all of a sudden he's not playing so you're having Noah Fenske and, you know, Austin Johnson and, and Carson Wells, you know, rotate in there and play. So there was a lot of things that we were dealing with as we went along there. And, but, you know, that's part of the game. And they, the best thing that they've learned is that any play I can be in for a young player now. They have to realize that, you know, when you're young in this program, like you said, 18, 19 years old, and you don't think you're, oh, I'm not going to probably play because I only got X amount of reps, and then all of a sudden I'm playing. Guess what? We're expecting you to help our offense function the way it's supposed to function. So that's a learning process right there about when guys step down, step, you know, we lose a guy to injury, which this game is going to happen. We have to have those backups ready to play. And it's a, it's a, it's a painful lesson to learn it from from that week or last week. But it was one of those things that they all realized that we really got to, everybody, whether you're a second team or third team, you got to be – locked in on our game plan so because you just never know particularly with the front people Nyan's he should be okay he's he's still you know dealing with his you know with his uh with his shoulder but uh, we think he's going to be okay it's nobody likes being criticized and it's got to be hard um, oh i love it <laughs> for brendan i look forward to it right. <laughs> i'm just brendan, kidding as an 18 year old I mean, this is probably the first criticism he's maybe ever had in his football career. He had such a successful sure. high school career. So I know you said he understands it, but how is he doing with handling the criticism and how do you kind of maybe help him along and walk him through that? That's, that's a great question because you remember these guys are young kids and they haven't been criticized or had the, the microscope on them as much as, as, as it's been right now at this level. And he's, he's, a, he's a tough kid. He's a fighter. Um, he wants to do so well for his teammates. And his teammates, you know, regardless of what you're hearing from the outside, his teammates all rally behind him. They all believe in him. They all know what his capabilities are. So they're very, very encouraging with him, which is really, really helpful for him in dealing with those circumstances. But it's, it's unfortunate when, you, when we don't play well. That's part of it. You know, you have fans that pay to come watch us play and we don't play well, then they're going to point at me. They're going to point at who's whatever area that's not doing well. And we got to take it as men, and that's part of the grown-up part of this business. But it is unfortunate for a young player. But he'll, he'll grow from it, he'll learn from it. And like a lot of these kids, you know, a lot of these young men are, you know, they're, they're being thrusted into some pressure situations. And I'm, we're going to work on it from day in and day out until they thrive in it under the pressure. And, and that's just a process that they have to learn and go through you know, there's really no no easy way to deal with it. I guess is what I'm saying. You mentioned that the game. I believe it was your freshman year at UCLA. You guys go 0 three and one, and you come back. You win the conference, win the Rose Bowl, um, as it looked up. So, uh, you know how this opportunity right now. You're 
you're one and two, but you start conference play. So how much do you guys focus on that as you look forward and say, it's really kind of a new season you're starting zero and zero in the conference? That's exactly right, and that's how we have to look at it. The preseason, we didn't do so well. So now that that's over, we're, we start our conference season this week, and, and as far as we, we can, can, uh, can look and look forward to ourselves is that we're, you know, we're in the conference race. You know, there's a number of teams that have, and I think there's only one undefeated team in our conference. So there's a lot of work that can be overcome. You know, there's a lot of still uh, things to look forward to and work for, you know, as we move forward. And we, we will. Our guys are, are uh, they're resilient. I know that. They're resilient. And believe me, they don't want to disappoint anybody. And, and, but sometimes it takes something like that to get that wake-up call that you need to, to get your thing and your, your, your motivation and the mentality of your program back on track. And, you know, like I said, their body of work up until this point has been pretty solid. Pretty solid. I mean, they, they've competed. They've, they've done some really positive things. However, you know, that last one, you know, we're going to have to really learn from it, and hopefully that doesn't happen again and, and, and really put, uh, you know, put much better efforts into our preparation so that we play better on Saturdays. I wonder if you could elaborate on your, your point about sticking your head in a little more of the offensive meetings. Does that – what does that entail, and how do you strike that balance when you've got coaches have egos and – Salaries too, and, and how does that? <laughs> and would that affect the game day operation at all? Well, it will not. It will not affect the game day operation because I, I, I have so much on my plate with what I do, and but I, I my experience is enough is as an offensive coach. You know, I've I've grown and been in a number of systems, and in my career, I've seen a lot of football. Um, I have a feel of what I think our team can be better at. And, you know, so I, I do interject from time to time with, with our offensive coaches about where I think uh, we might be able to spend a little bit more uh, resource into. And so we're, we're just doing that a little bit more. I just want to make sure that the, the package is, is completely, you know, in a way that I think it gets everyone involved and that everyone feels like uh, they got a part of our success as we move forward. So, uh, so I'm, I'm just – Overseeing it, making sure it makes sense, make sure it's sound, making sure we're making a, doing a systematic approach, and then you know the coaches will still operate like they normally would do on game day. Girls, you're talking about all, all the things that you're, you're addressing moving into the Pac-12 conference play. Um, your, your punter has been outstanding so far through three weeks. Uh, got a, maybe more work than you wanted last week, but a guy that's averaging almost 50 yards per punt. Uh, been hang time's been very good. Can you just talk a little bit about what Josh Watts has developed into as a punter? You know, Josh Watts is, is, has become a, a very consistent and uh, very productive player for us. And really, I, I have to probably give Shannon Turley a little bit of credit in that because, you know, Josh, when I got here last year and he was punting for us, he had so many soft tissue injuries dealing with his leg. You know, he had groin issues, hamstrings and stuff like that, hip flexors. And I think Shannon has done a great job of putting him on a regimen that is really creating a better body maintenance for him where he feels great every day. Uh, and he's been staying on this routine. He, he started it after spring practice. And so he carried it through the summer and through training camp. And, and, and voila, he's playing as, as consistent and as good as he's been. And as a lot of it's because he's feeling really good. And, and, and I think he, he's learned how to manage himself uh, to so he can perform on Saturday. So you're right. He's he's playing. He's kicking his and or punting as as best he's as he's been uh, since I've been here. And uh, thank goodness for him. He was a one of the bright spots of our of our play last week. With our special teams did play solid, other than the two punt returns we put on the ground. But in terms of all the kicking stuff, we he did really well. He put us when we're backed up and deep in our territory. He at least put it back to. You know, there the opposing office was on the other side of the 50. So, those are really, really good things that really gave us a chance to, to, to try, trying to create some equilibrium in the game. What do you expect out of Arizona State's defense this week? I guess if the roles were flipped and you were on their side, would it change anything you do, knowing you have an offense coming in that has been struggling, or do you do you expect them just to do what they do? I would expect them to. I know I would continue to to do whatever our defense does I might pressure the quarterback more you know I might put you know change the looks of what he's looking at from one picture to another you know that I would do those things to to continue to try to confuse the quarterback to make him hold the football which results into probably not very good plays offensively 
So yes, I mean, I, I think w they would do that. And guess what? Brendan knows that. You know, Drew knows that. They're going to continue to do this until you can prove that you can see what they're doing and be able to react efficiently against it. So I would, I would think we're going to continue to see what we've been seeing. A couple quick questions for you. First, Mustafa Johnson, do you know when he's going to be able to be active to play for you guys? Next week. USC? Yep. And then... Herm Edwards, like you, is a long time uh, NFL background, things like that. Are you looking forward to going against him? And you know, what have you seen as you've watched from his team? Have, have you seen some of that you know, NFL influence that he's brought to Arizona State? He does have a great deal of experience, you know, for a lot of it from the NFL. But you know, Herm, Herman's a, is, a, is a heck of a football coach. And uh, our path has crossed many times in our careers. Um, I never had a chance to, to coach with him. But, you know, he's been with a, a great number of really great coaches uh, from Tony Dungy to, you know, he's been for some really good people. And plus, he's been a head coach both in the professional level and now in the college level. So a wealth of experience. Uh, he's a great coach and he's an even better person. I do. I, I like Herm a lot. Um, so I, I'm sure he's going to have his team ready to play. And, and you know, and, and my job is obviously to go down there and get this team uh, uh, ready to be confident and effective and, and for them to believe that they can go down there and win this game. And that's really what our goal is this, this, this week. You rotated a bunch of offensive linemen through uh, in that last game, in part because of injuries. But, but when healthy, just how big is that rotation? Is it just five guys, seven? It shouldn't be at? any more than maybe six or seven guys in a perfect world. But we, we had a number of issues that happened last week. And... But that was a great learning medium for our guys to understand that their their number can be called at any time, and and you know we we got to get those guys ready to play so that they understand that. So that was definitely something they learned from that last week's game. All right, coach, we'll take a quick look at the Zoom. Troy, are there any questions from the Zoom? Yeah, we've got one uh, from Pat Rooney. Pat, uh, if you want to get on and go ahead and ask the question. Hey, Carl. Um, Obviously, getting the running game on track would, would be huge for, for Brendan. Uh, defenses, obviously, are, are, are looking to take that away, make Brendan beat them. But from, from your end of things, what has to happen? What adjustments can you guys make to, to maybe get Jarek and Alex going a little bit? That's exactly what we need to do is get Jarek and Alex going a little bit. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we, we, didn't, we weren't able to do that effectively last week. And, and we're going to go back to our formula, what's been successful for us, and then build from there, you know, in answering your question. So, you know, those guys are dynamic players that can do some positive things. And that would be nice to take some of that off of Brendan's plate. But, you know, we're, we're working hard to really create that balance, particularly in our run game. And, you know, also get these young receivers some opportunities, too. They didn't have many opportunities last week. We had a few catches in the game, but, you know, we need to get everybody involved uh, a little bit more efficiently. Anything else from the Zoom? It looks like uh, we've also got one. Justin, are you muted? Justin, go ahead. Yes, hear me? Okay. Carl, I'm, I'm wondering, and, and you alluded to this a bit um, earlier during your, your remarks, but just where is Brendan Lewis right now in terms of his morale, in terms of his confidence, and just what do you have to do as a head coach to kind of just walk, walk, walk the tightrope in terms of wanting to keep a pulse on that confidence, but also going about being able to constructively criticize him and, and bring him along in the process? You know, that's a fair question, too, you know, but where he is mentally is, you know, he's a very competitive kid. Um, as you can imagine, you know, he would he wants to play better. Um, so we, we just have to keep it in, you know, relative terms. You know, he's you know, we went through the tape and dissected all of the information that we saw. And, and I think he saw that, too, that it was some of the things that he did see and was, in, you know, was not sure about. You know, he was right you know, in some of those cases. And then he does miss that he's, you know, some of those opportunities that he wish he'd pull the trigger on. So he's just grown through the process. He, he knows that this is uh, extremely challenging week after week, and he knows that the, the expectations are always going to be high week after week. But I think from a confidence standpoint, he doesn't lack any confidence. It's, it's more, I think, if everyone does their job a little bit more effectively, then he'll get a chance to settle in and play. And, 
You know, we, we have to protect them better. We have to, you know, get open better. We have to, you know, make better decisions with the football. So it's, it's all encompassing. So he knows it's not all on his shoulders, uh, Justin. And, and I think the offensive guys, they all rallied around him today about, hey, let's get this right. You know, so that's, that's comforting too. So I know that his teammates are behind him. So I think that should help him in terms of his confidence. Any other questions for Coach? Then I'm going to end it with the ultimate softball one for you. Color analyst this week is your old quarterback, Tom Ramsey. Tom Ramsey. So any thoughts going back to when you played with him as a freshman and if you stayed in touch with him through the years or any good dirt on him? Well, Tom lives here in Denver. So he, he and I, matter of fact, he came out for during training camp. Uh, Tom was a, is a, was a heck of a player. You know, I was a freshman and he was a senior. And at first I had to earn – I had to earn his respect. So like any freshman receiver, he wasn't throwing any freshman. I remember when we do one-on-one -on -one, uh, against the DBs and he'd, he'd come up in line and he'll see who was next up in line and he'll tell the backup quarterback, hey, come off here, throw to this guy. He, so he wouldn't throw to me until I proved that I can catch the ball and run routes and get open and don't drop the ball. And then every now and then he would, he would throw to me and then all of a sudden, you know, he didn't mind throwing to me. So I had to earn that respect. So I, that's something that I think all of our young players, that's kind of a lesson that they need to understand is that when they're young in this, in any, you know, program, uh, you got to prove your worth. You got to prove your worth to your teammates. And then once they, they see who, how good you can play and how effective you've been and, and dependable you are, you'll get the respect you need. So that's, that's a, always a, a great learning tool you know, with young people coming into a program. Just get to work and be productive, and believe me, everything else will take care of itself. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you.